and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we've got a puzzle called Yucks for you by Jakob and Woofer ZFG, um, the dynamic duo of Sudoku constructing. And this puzzle I think has been around for a while, but we've steadily just been getting more and more recommendations to have a look at it over time. And apparently it is approachable today. And it has a very, very simple rule set. It's just straightforward arrow Sudoku. Um, so do have a go at this one. We get two given digits as well, which is rather a treat. Um, and I'll read the rules in just a moment or two. Uh, what do I need to talk about today? Not very much. There's a few birthdays. I want to say happy birthday to Neverio and the Asylum, no less. So two stalwarts of the Sudoku solving and constructing community. Uh, and also some of our viewers. So Belinda's turned 23 today. Oh no, no, Belinda, it was yesterday, wasn't it? Although you only sent us the email about your birthday late last night for us. Um, so good luck in your masters next year. And I hope you enjoy the chocolate cake. I know you'll be having, um, well, you probably had it yesterday, but you know what I mean. Uh, and then also um, Ekaterina, you're also 23 today, and I know that because your boyfriend Alexander wrote to us and said that you watch the channel and would like a shout out. So, Ekaterina, I hope you have a brilliant day too. And then Jordan from your wife, Heather. I understand the two of you watch all our videos, which is no mean feat nowadays. Um, so I hope that you, you Jordan, also have a splendid day. Um, now over to Patreon where, well, I have been working on the, on the Vista Buffel, uh, Sudoku hunt puzzles. Um, I got through another couple. Uh, yeah, they're definitely getting harder. Um, I, th I can't remember how many I've got left. Only, only a couple more to go. So, um, although including the last one, which is the one that Fister Muffel described as the best puzzle he's ever created. <laughs> So I'm, I think that one's going to probably take me many weeks to do, but it can't take me weeks because I'm determined if I possibly can um, to get this ready for you in time for Christmas. Uh, so if you're a patron of the channel, we hope that we're going to be ha able to give you a rather special Christmas present this year. Um, but anyway, those of you who've been attempting the cryptic scriptures of the Secret Snake Society, Sudoku Hunt, um, very well done to the following. Uh, more of you have got all of the answers correct. Nathan Cox, Lapsed Memory, Zorro, Evan Wong, Jameson Skalinski, uh, Nosferatil, Fabian Schulzer, Philip Nitschko, Johannes Verelst, Balint Rago, David Roth, Johan Asplund, Andrew Pippin, Andy Spicer and Byron Stuttervant. I think, Sturtevant, maybe. Um, all of you sent in the correct entries and loads more of you have sent in correct entries, but I'm not gonna read out all the names in one video. It would be, it would be dull, I think. I think it would be dull because there are hundreds. Um, anyway, let's get on with yucks. Now, I didn't know what a yucks was. I'm still not sure I know what a yucks is, but I did look it up on the internet and I presume that yucks is not referring. There is a, there is a, um, an airport code which is yux but i think it might be a reference to mario cars or mario at least super mario where there is this creature that looks a bit like a boomerang with four you know with four limbs which might be this thing <laughs> i don't know so imagine that shape i think that's basically what a yucks looks like but don't blame me if that's wrong um anyway these are the rules normal sudoku rules apply digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle and that is it so if you're not familiar with arrow sudoku the way it works is those two digits there let's let's put some digits in let's make them three and five three plus five equals eight so you'd write eight into the circle it's that simple. And if you do enjoy Arrow Sudoku, we do have an app full of these puzzles, full of handcrafted uh, Arrow Sudoku puzzles, and they are amazing. So this is a very, very good form of variant Sudoku, one I'm a big fan of. Um, but we don't do it very often on the channel nowadays. It's really hard to just get a plain Arrow Sudoku onto Cracking the Cryptic because there's so many amazing and innovative puzzles out there. But anyway, the way to play this is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play Let's Get Cracking. The three in the corner doesn't get a song. It has to be a fresh three. And in fact, we're not going to be able to do three in the corner in this puzzle, are we? Because those two cannot be threes. So REM doesn't get sung today. 
unless I do what someone suggested, which was to do uh, an outro of it's the end of the it's the end of the puzzle as we know it. <laughs> and I feel fine. Well, I would feel fine if I managed to solve it. I'm guessing we start with the yucks, don't we here? Um, and my my only thought about the yucks is that those digits all have to be different. And therefore, the minimum I could make those digits would be one, two, three, four, five and six in some order. And the triangular number for six, i.e. what's one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six is 21. So these three arrows sum to at least 21 and there are three of them. So if I divide 21 by three, I get seven. So it's not possible to put less than seven into this circle, which is perhaps surprising at first blush, but it seems to be true. Now, okay, here's another point. Nine in this box just cannot live on an arrow at all because if we put nine on an arrow cell, you'd have to put at least 10 in the circle. So nine is in one of three positions in box two. Ooh, oh, she nearly gets nine placed in box five, but not quite because we can't put nine on arrows and we now can't put it in those three cells. Nine is in one of two positions only. Uh, okay, so this circle can't be a nine anymore. Bah, that's not. I think going to be terribly useful. In fact, I'm now seeing, and perhaps I should have seen this instantly, that every every arrow in this puzzle is only two cells long at, at most. That one is one cell only. In fact, that one is sort of one cell only. Two cell arrows don't tend to be very restricted creatures. Um, so... What on earth? What on earth am I meant to look at here? Hang on, hang on, hang on. There must be something relative. This is meant to be quite approachable. So it can't be that brutally difficult, can it? Um, OK, let's switch tack slightly. Where does that digit look? Let's make that digit blue. Where does this? Oh, I don't like that, actually. I'm not going to do blue. because I Well, I, no, it's OK. I think I can see the lines but uh, underneath the blue. But where does this digit, which is a 7, 8 or a 9, go in this box now? And I think it's only got one position, which is here, which is interesting because that then gets transported or transposed down to this cell by the one cell arrow. Um, now, why do I think it can only go here? Well, let's think about that. If we put itself on its own arrow, what would that mean? Well, imagine this was a 7. If that was a 7, that would be implying this was a 0 to make the maths work. 7 plus 0 would equal 7, but you can't put 0 on a Sudoku, uh, or at least in this Sudoku. So we're not going to be able to put a bl the blue digit in any of those cells. By Sudoku, it can't go in any of those three cells. And here is a knowledge bomb for you from Cracking the Cryptic. 6 is not the same digit as 7, 8 or 9, so it's not going to sit in the corner. So it goes there, which goes there, which then goes down in one of those three cells at the bottom of the grid. We're getting a bit overlappy with our our greys there, aren't we? Maybe I'll use a yellow, a yellow flash today. Um, hmm. Right, so what does that mean? So if this was... Well, if this was a nine, that would be a nine because you couldn't put nine on this arrow down here. And then there'd be a nine in one of these two cells, a nine in one of these two cells. It'd be quite powerful if this was nine. Does it need to be nine though? Let me think about that. So let's just think about this. If this was 7, I know that these would add up to 21. They'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This would be an 8, 9 pair. So we'd have 7, 8, 9 here. No, it doesn't look like that's doing much. If this is 8, um, these would add up to 3 lots of 8, which is 24. 24 plus 8 is 32. Right, okay, so I'd have a 4-9 pair here. Now, how do we know that? We know that because of something called the secret. Now, the secret is something I only tell my favourite people. And don't worry, I'm definitely going to tell you the secret now. But don't tell anybody else. It is a secret. 
The secret is that any complete box of a Sudoku contains digits that sum to 45, because any complete box of a Sudoku contains the digits 1 to 9 once each. Now, if you add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. So if this is 8, because we, we know effectively that's 4 8s, we could say, which is 32. So these must add up to 13 and include a 9. So this must be a 4 9 pair with an 8. So we get 4 8 9 here. This isn't working, is it? Right, okay, let's try 9. If that's 9, those 7 digits add to 4 9s, which is 36. These have got to add up to 9, and there are lots of ways of doing that. It would just be the way that was left over from not being used on the arrows. So this is still not going well. Ah! What is going on? What is going on here? This is weird. Is, it, is there some sort of syzygy? Is it... I can't really see this arrow down here very well. I'm still not convinced that I've got the right colours to solve this properly. Um, what else could it be? It could be parity. Okay, yes, I do actually know what the parity of those cells is. Let me just think about this for a second. Um, oh, good grief. Right, that is it. That is it. That's why it's considered approachable. I'm not sure that is approachable. I can tell you this, Jakob and Woofer ZFG, that is quite beautiful. That's really well hidden. I, I Well, is it? I'm not sure. I may, well, it is well hidden. I, I want to claim it's well hidden, but it's really, really pretty. Okay, so let's use the secret again. We know that the secret tells us that this complete row of the puzzle, this coral row, is uh, sums to 45, because it contains the digits 1 to 9 once each. But what's the nature of an arrow together with its circle? Well, it's nature, the, the sum of the digits on an arrow and its circle is always an even number. And that's because if you think about the arrow, let's express the arrow as saying, well, it sums to x. Well, x plus x, which must be the digit then in the circle, is 2x. Now, 2x is obviously an even number. So this is an even number, this is an even number, but the whole row is an odd number, adds to an odd number. So the only way this works is if this little string of digits is odd. Now study this box. Because there's something rather beautiful about it. Where's my where's my blue digit gone? Oh, let's restart my device. No, thank you. I don't want to restart my device. I'm in the middle of a very interesting puzzle. So, these are odd. Those two cells, whatever, whether this was odd or even, the fact is that that's two lots of it. So that's 2x, so that's even. 6 is an even number. So we've got these cells here, which are all even, plus the coral cells, which are odd. So those eight cells add to an odd number. But the overall box adds to an odd number as well. So what's the parity of this? Well, it must preserve the parity of those cells, so it must be even. But if that's even and it's this digit, it's eight. <laughs> that's beautiful. That is just beautiful. I'm going to be interested, if, assuming I can solve the puzzle, I'm going to be interested to know whether that's considered very straightforward. I can see, I mean, there will be people who just do this really quickly and think, well, there was nothing nothing remotely complicated about that. But, but I hope even those people just, it raises a smile for, because that is really pretty. Now, look, we can almost get an 8 onto this arrow, which would make this a 9. But now I know that those are a 4-9 pair, don't I, using the maths we did earlier. Um, okay, and then I'm stuck again. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm not stuck. Look, there's a 6 in this box, hidden cutely in the corner, trying to trying to make us not look at it. But look, these arrow cells now, there are three ways to make eight in, in two, along two cell arrows. You could have one seven, 
2, 6 or 3, 5. Well, 2, 6 is no longer an option. So these cells have got to be 1, 7, whoops, uh, 1, 7 and 3, 5 in some order, which means we now know that those cells have got to be 2, 4 and 9. Now that means, well, that means I now know which of these little spindly things, these legs of the yucks, have to, has to be the 2, 6 arrow. Because it's not this one, there's a 2 in the row, and it's not this one, there's a 6 in the row. So that's a 2, 6 pair. And then whatever that is, let's highlight that in a different colour. That arrow now, oh, it's a bit slightly difficult to see. Actually, I'll go to... I'll go to the original palette. We'll make these um, red. No, it's still red. I just don't really... None of the colours are appealing to me today. What's wrong with my appreciation of colourage? I don't know. Oh, dear. Um, let's try a different colour altogether. Let's try green. That green is rather pretty. So that th this, because it can't go on this arrow must go there look um, which is quite cool and that one I suppose let's let's complete the picture so that one must go there okay and it can't then go there <laughs> those two cells can't go there because that cell would then be also adding up to eight And those are adding up to at least a three. So this is three, five or seven, which is, no, it's not three because there's a two already here. This can't be a one, two pair. So actually that's five or seven now is my contention. And it is this color, this sort of browny red color. Um, right. Okay, but now... Now there's got to be a six on this arrow, which means this has got to be one six adding up to seven, which means this has got to be uh, three five now, which means this has got to be one seven, which means this has got to be three five, this has got to be one seven, and all of a sudden we are cooking with the proverbial gas, are we? Maybe, or maybe not. Um, I don't know. Don't know. Still, let's just try and work this out. What's going on in this? I don't know that we're going to be able to get too much more done in box three. We could... Blue in, blue in box five is restricted. Although, oh, ah, oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Okay, that is beautiful. Where does blue go in box five? Now, if you can't see the answer to that straight away, pause the video and stare at the grid and wait for inspiration to strike because you don't want me to tell you this. This is really pretty. It will, it will make your day. It will make your day when you see this. Honestly, it will. It will. So where does eight go in box five? That's the question I want to ask. For those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. The, re the reason it's an interesting question is you can see on the face of it, it seems to be able to sit in any of these positions. Now we can get rid of this position quite quickly because if there's an eight on an arrow, the arrow will sum to nine and we can't put nine here because there's a four nine pair looking at this cell. So now our eight is in one of these two positions. Now what would happen if this was an eight? This is gorgeous. If that's an eight, this two cell arrow is impossible to fill because all three combinations of two cell eight arrows are on the yucks. <laughs> so if you want to put two six here, you can't. If you want to put three five here, you can't. If you want to put one seven here, you can't. It's impossible. So that can't be an eight. And that means the eight only lives there, which means that cell's got to be a nine and that cell's got to be a one. Wow. I don't know what I was trying to type there, but it wasn't the right digit. So that's a one. That's a seven. Um, yeah. Okay. This puzzle is really cute, isn't it? It really is special. Um, 
And for our next trick, we're going to say that there's a one in one of two places at the bottom of this, this column look. We could, do we know what this is now? I'm wondering, because it can't be eight or nine. And yet there's a one in this box already. So the minimum I can put on this arrow now would be a two, three pair, which would add up to five. So that cell is at least five, but cannot be eight or nine. So it's five, six or seven, which means this cell's five, six or seven. Those two are the same. Let's not forget that. Let's color those in. Um, we'll give those the color of, ooh, that's quite an interesting blue. No, I'm not, I don't want to use that one. I'll make them purple. Yeah, okay, purple is very, it's re relatively clear anyway. Um, so purple, well, purple can't go in its own arrow, can it? Right, so where does purple go in this box? And the answer is not here, because then this cell would be a zero. So it goes exactly there. So that's purple, and it's five, six, or seven. which is good, but it doesn't actually tell us all of all of five, six and seven are still possible in box two to be in any of those three cells. So I don't think we're going to learn which way that which way that folds. He says desperately trying to work out what this means. Um, Let me think about this. What's going on now? I don't think it's this one. The, I think this puzzle seems to be about two cell arrows and repeats. So I'm wondering whether the idea here is if, if these, if this was say a four and that was a one three pair and that was a one three pair, you can see that you'd force the a one three pair into the, those digits. So I'm wondering whether that's this sort of spindle shape here is, it's like a rotary arm, isn't it? it, it a Catherine wheel, if we spun it really fast. Um, no, I'm, <laughs> it's a bit of a pregnant pause while I try and work out what that means. Uh, I don't think it can be this one. This one is a little interesting. If I could get rid of nine from this cell, I would feel more confident about it being relevant. But I don't see how to do that. Is it this one then? Am I, am I under, underplaying the potency of purple? Uh... Oh, I am. I should take my own advice. Oh, good grief. Which I know it's not five. Oh, ah, it's beautiful again. It's beautiful. It's the same trick again. <laughs> it's just foxing me every time. Right, this is not five or six. Again, pause the video if you can't see why. It's worth it. It's worth it just to give yourself the epiphany that I have only just received my, um, because my brain didn't work. Right. Even though I was looking at this one thinking exactly the right thoughts, I should have been think, looking at this one and thinking those thoughts, because how could this be five? And the reason there's a problem here is normally five has two ways of appearing on a two cell arrow. It can be a one four pair or a two three pair. The same is true of six. It can normally be a two four pair or a one five pair. But here, these naughty little ones here are wiping themselves out of these arrows. So in fact, five and six only have one possible combination. So let's try and put two, three. If this was a five, let's make it a five. There's only one way we could do this, and that's like this. And you can see there's a problem here because this cell cannot exist. There's a two, three pair looking at it. So this, this won't work. If we try and make this six, we've got to put two, four into these cells. And again, this cell will have no, no fill. So this is in fact seven. Um, wow, well, which doesn't do anything up here. Um, oh, but this is right. This is potent, though. This is potent because now if these are sevens, where does seven go in box six? 
Now it seems to have to go on this arrow, which is not allowed to add up to 8 by Sudoku. So it must add up to 9, and there must be a 2-7 pair then on the arrow. Which means that 9 is in one of those two cells in box 4. Okay. Now, do I know <laughs> which way round these arrows go? I know one of them, because we can't make either of these arrows 1, 6, one of them is 2, 5, and one of them is 3, 4. I mean, I'm going to put the options in, in the hope. Y yes, okay, it is helpful to do that, because now in this column, you can see that's a two, three, four, five quadruple. So this cell isn't able to be two, um, and therefore that must be six. So that becomes a two. That's not a two, so this isn't a five. Oh no, it's much easier than this. It's much easier. Look, there's a four up here. So four is pushed onto this arrow. That's gorgeous, right? So that must be a three, four pair, which means this must be a two, five pair, because otherwise we've got a repeated digit. Now, if that's three, four, look, that's three, that's five, that's five, that's two. And we're off to the races again. What does this column need? Four and something, four and six. Uh, what does this column need? I want to say eight and nine. Yeah, that's right, eight and nine. So this column needs one and three, and there's a three in the corner doing some work. So three and one go into the grid. Three is in one of those three cells. These digits are known. They're two, five, and six by Sudoku. That's not two. Now, are you going to give up your secrets now, little puzzle? Have we defeated you or not? We've almost used all of the arrows. So we're probably not a million miles away, he says. That can still be nine, which is really annoying. <laughs> oh, there's a seven here, right? Sorry, look, seven and one can be ruled out of this, these two cells. So seven comes and sits in a domino at the bottom of column one. This one, is that doing something? Uh don't know is the answer. Oh no, well actually this one is doing something because I can't put eight on this arrow anymore. If I put eight on the arrow, the only way of making this a single digit total is with a, with a one, one eight pair adding up to nine, which is now impossible. So that is good. So I get eight here, which means I get eight here and nine here. So this is not now a nine arrow or an eight arrow or a seven arrow. Right. Right, this is very restricted. It can't be a three arrow uh, because this can't be a one, two pair given this, this one here. So the three in this box gets placed. And this circle, well, it, given the one here, this is a minimum of two plus, oh, it can't be two plus three. Ah, okay, it's a minimum of four plus two, which is six. So it is six. That's all it can be. That's just a six. This has got to be a two, four pair because it can't be a one, five pair. And this, now, is that a one, five pair or is it a two, four pair? I'm wondering about the rotary arm thing. It, yeah, that's lovely. It can't be a two, four pair because if it was the same as its friends down here, you'd have to put two and four into those cells and you can't do it because the twos and fours are horizontal in box one. So that's one, five. Don't, I don't think we know the order. We might do, but I don't think we do. Um, I found that one five. Oh no. All right. I was saying, I was about to condemn it as being utterly useless and it is useless looking vertically, but it isn't looking downwards. Look, one and five in this box suddenly get placed. So that's five. That's one. One is in one of these cells. Five is in one of these cells as well. Ooh, hang on. No, this is more interesting. Look, one, two, three, four and five looking at that cell. So that's at least six. So this is six, seven or eight. That must be one, one or two. Ah, it can't be five anymore. Um, 
Now, what can this not be is the question. I can see it can't be eight. Can it really be nine? I think the answer to that is it probably is nine. Uh, I can't prove it yet, but nine is definitely in one of those two cells. So nine is definitely in one of these two cells. Um, okay, what else can we rule out from this cell, if anything? We know it's at least a seven. Right, so it's only able to be seven or nine um, because, whoopsie, sorry, I'm replacing a pencil mark I just took out, took out by mistake. Um, because this is at least six, this must be at least seven, but cannot be eight. So this is either, right, right, beautiful. This is now proved to be nine because it cannot be seven. Because if it was seven, the only way this arrow works is the same trick again. It just keeps happening. This would be a one six pair and it would rule out that cell. It's beautiful, this puzzle. It is very rare to come across a puzzle that is so thematically consistent and also good. You know, it really is beautiful, the logic in this. So now that's not six anymore. So this, this domino is, I, oh, <laughs> okay. All right, just show off a bit more. Jakob and Woofers NFG. This is, this has done it, he's done it again. They've done it again. Look, that, if this was a two seven pair, that would be broken. So it must be a 1-8 pair. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculously clever, this. Absolutely amazing. Um, right, now, come on. Get your head in the game, Simon. These are a 6 and a 7, which we can do. So that must be a 4. That must be a 4. That must be a 6. These squares are 5 and 2. Okay, which I can't do. I nearly clicked tick then. That would not have got me a... Uh, a correct answer. That's a seven. That's a two. That's a two. That's a five. So two sits up in the corner. So nine comes downwards a little bit. Uh, this needs to be a four five pair. So let's get rid of that eight. I don't know if we can get the four and the five yet. Um, we can, we note that there's a six in one of these two cells by Sudoku. One, two, no, ah, what's going on now? What about threes and fives then? Yes, okay, three and five in this box are placed. So that's five, that's three, which means these two squares are four and eight, which are also therefore placed, which means that's four, that's nine. Um, now down here, we need ones and threes into those cells. She's going to place our eight here, places our six here. That's no longer able to be six. Now, what's going on? So one of these rows must give us something soon, I think. Uh, the five at the bottom is doing fives and threes up here. It's probably been available for ages. Apologies if you've been shouting at me. This is a two or a four. So look, there's a two, four, five triple in this row. So a question we could have asked is where does three go in row four? And it seems to only have the option of being in that particular cell. Uh, there's a two, four here. So this is nine. Yeah, there's a bit of Sudoku. We could have tied it up. Uh, that's therefore got to be a nine. This column needs to have a six in it, which is going to go there. So that becomes five, two, six. Um, which gives us the five and the one, which is going to give us the one and the three and the three and the four. And that's become a four, so that's a four, that's a five. And if we've not made an error, that's going to be a two, that's going to be a two, and that's going to be a four. What a beautiful, beautiful puzzle. Yay. Loved it. Absolutely start to finish. That is stone cold quality. Um, reminded me a bit, actually of the puzzle we did a couple of days ago called Pile of Fifteens. That was just a standard killer Sudoku. And yet all of the logic in it felt fresh and like you'd never done a killer Sudoku before in your life. This is similar. It's just, I mean, admittedly, I've done enough Arrow Sudoku that I know when I get stuck, I can run through my mental, thank goodness I said parity because I was really stuck at that point. But it's a really nice idea to get this digit from parity 
And then what was the other? There was something really clever. Yeah, the, the yucks. This arrow not being able to be eight because these three uh, cells would have then become impossible. That was really beautiful. And the way that it kept delivering this trick, which was basically to say, OK, two cell arrows that look at each other that have the same combination, they are not going to work. And that happened, you know, the, the theme just kept on emerging to, to, to do that and execute it with that sort of aplomb takes a lot of panache. So Jakob and Wufa ZFG take bows, my friends, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.